ever wondered how to build a boost-based balanced compact USB supplied plus minus 6 volt low current differential power supply? No? That means you're a normal person, good for you, but for any other weirdos out there, here's how I built mine. What on earth is a differential power supply? It's okay, it has nothing to do with the mathematical equations, I think. I never understood differentials. Well, in a few words, it's a type of power supply that gives both a positive and a negative voltage reference to ground potential. But why? Well, this supply is most common in op-amp circuits, whether it's some sort of signal processing or power output. But why bother complicating things? Well, there are two main reasons. First, input and output stages of most op-amps are far from rail to rail. That means that the usable voltages are somewhere around 1-2 volts away from the supply rails, both on inputs and outputs. This is not a major inconvenient and can be fixed by using a reference voltage at half the supply voltage. If this supply is used as virtual ground, then the VCC becomes V+, and the actual ground becomes V-. So this range works somewhat like a differential power supply. So it's fixed. Or is it? The second problem comes when driving a higher current load, like a speaker. Your output is referenced around the half supply voltage, and the speaker is directly connected to ground. The solution to this is adding a capacitor. The problem that comes with this approach is the low-pass filter you just formed. If the application is audio, you will need large capacitors to reproduce low-frequency sounds. This can be a problem sometimes. The solution to this is a true differential supply. This eliminates the capacitor and keeps all sounds in order, without distortions. So differential supplies are useful. So how do you make a differential supply from a single positive supply? First, we need a negative voltage. How can this be obtained? Well, as always, there are multiple ways. The easiest would be to make a charge pump. This can be built with a square wave signal, some diodes and capacitors. The problem with this circuit is that the output voltage will be around 1, 1.5 one volts lower than the input, because of the diodes. So from 5 volts we get about minus 3.5. If you want more control and also higher negative voltages, a buck boost supply can be built. A bit more complicated, but this time you get any voltage you want. But what about the positive rail? What if I want more than the input voltage? Then I need a boost circuit, which would look something like this. But building both a boost and a buck boost sounds really complicated. Well, I found a solution in an old application node that involved combining the boost with a charge pump to form something like this. On the positive rail, it works just like a normal boost circuit, and on the negative rail, it's a charge pump that uses the same reference voltage as the positive rail. So in theory at least, both rails will have exactly the same voltage. This is why the positive rail has two diodes, to have the same voltage drop as the negative one. We'll just have to see if this thing works. So how to choose all the components? Well, first let's decide what we expect from the power supply. I want an output of about plus minus 6 volts and a current of 50 milliamps, and it should all be supplied from the USB, so the input is somewhere between 4.5 and 5.5 volts. To keep things simple, I will use as boost converter IC the AP3012, with fix fixed frequency and integrated switching transistor. It won't be the most efficient circuit, but it will be simple and small. From this information we can slowly calculate the major parameters of the supply. The duty cycle, average inductor current, the diodes, peak inductor current and inductor value, feedback network, output capacitors and input capacitors, and I guess that's about it. Now let's see if this thing actually works. No matter what the measurements will say, at least the circuit came out small and compact. It's so tiny and cute! Now this is the setup I will be using. I'll just connect my circuit to all the voltmeters and ammeters, and this voltmeter I'll be switching between the outputs and hopefully there will be no smoke today. Time to do some measurements, and if you ever wondered how many multimeters is too many, 5 is not the magic number. I'm still missing one. Now what I'm looking for with this setup is the efficiency, but it will also be interesting to see how the supply behaves when unequal loads are added. How close are the output voltages on the two supply rails? 
So I'll just plot out all these values and... Hmm... Doesn't look very good. I wonder why. Why is my efficiency so low? I only got 66%. This is unacceptable. Well, if we analyze the efficiency from a mathematical point of view and look at all the major contributors, the inductor resistive losses, transistor conduction losses, diode losses, IC current consumption and feedback resistor losses, we see that even if we neglect the switching losses, we still get a theoretical maximum of 69%, which is really close to the measured 66%. So could this be improved? Well, to a certain degree, yes. We can use a smaller DC resistance inductor, lower voltage drop diodes, bigger feedback resistors, and look, we gained about 15% of efficiency. Let's see if the theory holds up in practice. So this time I will be doing the same measurements as before, and hopefully when it's all plotted out, it looks a bit better. Let's see. Well, I did get a 13% increase in efficiency, much better than before, but I still have a large channel mismatch. Got to fix that also. But why is it so big? Well, it has to do with the diode's current to voltage drop relation. The bigger the current, the larger the drop. In our case, the biggest mismatch happens when there is a large current difference between the two channels. So, to fix this we need to ensure a certain load at all times on both channels. And this load has to be as close as possible to the maximum load, without affecting the efficiency too much. So, I will change the feedback resistors on the positive rail to 1 and 3.8 kilo ohms, as in the first attempt, and on the negative rail, I will add a fixed 4.7 kilo ohms resistor, as a static load. So the final schematic will look like this. So after a bit of testing, these are the final results. Efficiency dropped a bit, as expected, but this time I have quite an acceptable channel mismatch. This power supply is finally usable in some actual circuits. I call this a win. Hope you got some useful information out of this, and let me know if you try to build this circuit. Leave your thoughts in the comments, and see you next time. Bye bye!